have a question. Just what a session would look like with you and sticking with what you've just given us. You, someone you've identified needs to open up their diaphragm, expand their container, you have them on bolsters, they are expanded, and you say that's the place you want to start, that sense of tapping into a sense of well-being as a starting point to work on the trauma. What does it look like in session with you with that client when you work on the trauma? Are they can still in that pose through the entire session, or is it, I'm just curious. Yeah, where okay. Take it from. Well, when, you know, a person comes in, they don't just lie down on a yoga mat the first time they walk in the door. Right. Of course, I um, have an initial session with them. You know, they get to know me, I get to know them. So they first come in and, you know, I just ask them why they're there. Because I don't spend that much time on the phone with them when they first make an appointment. I want to do face to face. I mean, I do telephone sessions with people who have already been my client and they're on vacation or they moved away. I don't like doing Skype. I mean, I read energy. Not to say I couldn't do that for, for someone across the world. I could. But I don't really like to do that. I really like face to face. So I have an initial session with them. Then I give them, you know, a multi generational history form, which I could go to Europe, which I've done for years and years and years, and have 100 people in the room, and one person could raise their hand and come up in front of me and lay down on a mat, and I could do a body session with them, and I would not have to know one single thing about them. I could do that, but I don't do that in my private practice because a multi-generational family history is a map. And I need to know things like, did they ride down a hill on their bicycle when they were 13, fall off and break their neck? I need to know if they broke their neck. Now, because I've been doing this for 37 years, the likelihood that the fact that they had a broken neck and they would then do something in therapy with me that would hurt them is very unlikely because I'm ultra cautious. So even if they had some terrible thing in their physical history and I hadn't found out about it, probably nothing would happen just because it's me and the level of my experience. However, I still take that history. I take a physical history of everything that's ever happened to their body and I take a multi-generational family history. It's a map. The body is the territory. So that takes several sessions. While we're doing that, I'm tracking the body all the time anyway. And people sometimes have huge releases just taking the history. You know, just the awareness sometimes that comes from, I, ask a lot, I'm, I also have a specialty in pre and perinatal psychology and I've done a presentation here, uh, at least one, I think. And um, I ask them a lot of questions about their birth. Sometimes they know things, sometimes they don't. But I can zero in on certain things, like if they, they've had anesthesia, and then they're like sometimes really, really split off. I'd say to them, like some people that have smoked pot for 50 years, and uh, or in other ways are extremely split off, I might make a connection between that and their anesthesia. Mm -hmm. And um, they might have, like, look like a lightning bolt hit them right in the session. We're not even doing breathing. All of a sudden, this like thing goes through their body and they go like, zoom, like they just got there right then, mm -hmm. just from the awareness of making that connection. Those things happen even without, without lying down on the mat. So the awareness alone causes, because I'm tracking their body, even if we're just sitting there talking, constantly asking them you know, what they're aware of. So like in Gestalt therapy, they don't do touching, but they're, they're always doing awareness. So, you know, even if you don't ever lie someone down, if you're constantly tracking the awareness with the presence and the grounding, that you're doing it. So that's what that would look like. And, you know, at some point, 
um, they would, you know, we would, we would start with awareness, which is just what are you aware of. Then I would, I would devise a particular pose that I wanted to put them in, depending on where their body was blocked that particular day. Now, most people have blocks that are uh, chronic. So, you know, you can do a yoga posture that's going to cover a lot of blocks. Like putting someone in a supported back bend is going to get the diaphragm, it's going to get the throat, it's going to get the chest. You know, so you're opening the whole torso right there. And they're completely relaxed. You know, they enjoy it. You know, but then there's other ones that open the pelvis and the hips, mm -hmm. you know, and um, they're all very relaxing. Anyone in here do Iyengar? No? Uh, Supta Baddha Kanasana. Um, do you know what that is? Yeah, but I can tell you right now. I've heard it okay. before. <laughs> well, when you're lying down over a bolster and you, you strap your... Um, your feet are together, soles together like this, and you strap your, your, and your legs are out like this. It's a huge hip opener. It's really relaxing, but that is, that's a pelvis opener right there. So, anyway. Does that help you understand what it might look like in practice? Okay, the other thing is gestalt therapy. You, you don't have an agenda. It's completely open. It's like, Lie down and we'll see what happens. Moment to moment to moment to moment. So I, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm tracking the, the client as the client tracks themselves. I have no idea what's going to happen. Like the one I just mentioned. This lady was in here the other day. So, you know, um, I'm just asking her what she's aware of and you know, telling her to pay attention to her breathing, and I just made a comment on her process. Boy, you really work hard. And she's like, you know, she starts gagging, and, you know, I know there's a feeling, but she's not letting it come out. She's like choking. So I'm going like, I, I don't try to push her. I said, don't force it. Don't force it. She says, I force everything. I force everything. I work so hard. Well, She's doing her process right in front of me. And I'm not going to make, make her, force her to let out the feeling because right there she's doing, she's, what, how do I want to say it? She's, um, she's double doing what she's doing. First she's forcing the breathing, then she's forcing the releasing. And I'm telling her, don't push it, don't push it, don't push it, don't. I'm not going to help her push, which is the old-fashioned way back when I learned in the 60s, 70s. We used to do that. That's the cathartic model. I gave it up a long time ago. It doesn't work. It's re-traumatizing. So I can't tell you what a session looks like because I, I, don't, I don't have a model for a session. I just know when it starts. I know when it's in the middle, and I know when it ends. And I just reflect. I'm just a reflector. Well, you've seen me. You, you know what I do. And, you know, at the end, usually I try to wrap it up with sort of a, you know, some way of reinforcing that core sense of well-being. I might ask them, if your body could speak to you right now, what would it say? You know, it's not like me giving them the message. It's in my presence. I mean, what I really feel, if you see me do a session, and Mike knows and Michelle knows, you, it would look like I'm doing nothing. I'm just sitting there. But I know very well that it's my presence and my being present. And I am 100% present every minute that I'm there. Every minute I am tracking what's happening. And that's what does it, because I think for most people, they have not had anyone be present for them, yeah. Yeah. even for 50 minutes. <laughs> so I hope that it describes the session to you.
It does, and I think it gets to a deeper question for me with limited experience or exposure to this. Is there a connection that you feel that we as people hold trauma in specific parts of our bodies? And I think that's what, when you were describing, I was just with you in the imagery of someone on a bolster opened up and that it had been identified that their chest needed to, that part of the container needed to be expanded. And thinking that versus a pelvic opening, so to speak, is there the feeling that certain traumas for certain people are held within specific areas and that's a goal to open that specific area? Yes, but first the relationship has to be established. Right, right. So I would never, I, I wouldn't go to the trauma first ever. Right. That's why I say establish the relationship, the sense of self, that that person is never going to regress. They have to have the sense of self, they have to be able to stay present, they have to be able to stay grounded, and they have to be able to stay in contact before you ever touch the trauma. That's the way I do it.